Hi guys, today's the one year anniversary of our 2019 F550. It's got just over 20,000 on it. Now this truck here is a extended cab, uh, 6.7 diesel with an 11 foot uh, Redding Marauder body and two uh, buyer stainless steel 48 inch side boxes and one box on the bulkhead that's um, a side box um, for a pickup truck. Now, I wanna go over first thing that these trucks specifically are kinda of hard to find with that Redding Marauder body. Dealers don't really stock them because the body costs a lot more money and they don't make as much off it that way. So when we actually went to get this truck, there was only three in the country. And like I said, that was a year ago. Today might be a little different. And that Pacific truck with that body, we had to drive two, two and a half hours into Jersey to find it. Um, there was two more, one out in Ohio and one out somewhere out west with that Pacific truck with that body. So they're kind of hard to get um, when you need one. Now, we used to have a uh, 2011 um, 6.7 F550 um, that had was a single cab with a nine foot body. And the only problem with it is it was an L-Pack. And we loved the L-Pack when we first got it. But then as time went on, we got sick of it. It was kind of a big hole that we would just fill up with junk. We'd be on a job site, ripping stuff out to get a tool. It was embarrassing, it was frustrating. It was never any fun. So instead of the L-Pack, we went with their extended cab to get uh, some of our gear that we don't want to get wet. Um, out of the weather and into the cab of the truck. We're able to put our luggage in there now and we're traveling, so that's nice. Next thing we did was we went with an 11 foot over the nine, like I say. And the number one reason we did this is because we always haul 10 foot lengths of material, whether it be rebar 10 foot lengths, pipe being 10 foot lengths. And when we had the nine foot body, all the pipe and all the rebar would be over the tailgate. So it would kind of be hard to bundle it all together because it's all different sizes. Sometimes it's four, sometimes it's four, two, and one inch. And trying to bundle that together is tough. And then we put rebar over the other side and leave it hang out the back with red tape. And it was just frustrating. It took up a lot of dead space that we could have used with other stuff. Um, so now with this truck, the 11 foot, we're able to get everything inside of the bed. Doesn't hang over the back. And the great part about it is we can put the, uh, the two inch pipe inside of the four, uh, the one inch pipe inside of the two inch, kind of sleeve it all together and then put all the rebar inside of the pipe. And we still have plenty of bed space to put other things. Now this truck is currently registered at 26,000. Um, the reason we do that is we don't want to have to run a portion tags and if the stickers. So it kind of cuts down on the cost to run a truck and the paperwork to do so. Now, we do have a Peterbilt that we don't have tagged, apportioned. So we can't run it out of state um, if, you don't have, if you don't have that and you're over 26,000. So we just don't take the Peterbilt out of state. And to be honest with you, the Peterbilt doesn't really work on a daily basis for us because of the fact that it's so large, it's hard to get into the sites. With that truck, it doesn't have the steering radius, it's too tall. Now, same thing with the top kick. The top kick's just too too much truck for us. Um, and it's just kind of, we don't need it. And the 193 wheel, wheelbase with the Fords kind of works great for us. It uh, really gets around the tight torn as well. Steering radius is great. Can't really complain about the overall with that. But guys, uh, Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. We love it. Thanks. All right, guys. So we're going to start at the front of the truck. And of course, we have our cat license plate. We went with steel wheels over aluminum. And the reason for that is because with the steel wheels, you can rotate them um, without having to take the tires off. And if you get a flat tire, you can use any wheel anywhere on the side of the road. With aluminum wheels, you can't. So we always just put the Pacific Dually simulators on. I think they're like 200 bucks. They work great. Never really had a problem with them. 
they really make the truck shine um, we added the American flag logo we're very patriotic and it is an XL F550 6.7 power stroke diesel it's not a truck if it's not a diesel that's our motto full tilt rating added as well that one H and K did the logo group um, they also did the side logos on the body they don't come from factory like that now I do want to talk about this body because it's the best one on the market that money can buy they're absolutely amazing and they they're made by Redding and it's called the Marauder body now they make this in I know at least two models they make a light duty model and then this model which is heavy duty now the amazing part about this thing is the tailgate system. So me and Ed use this every day like a workbench. We put it up and down no less than 10 times. And most tailgates have the pins where you bang them out or you use the easy latch twist system or the spring loaded system where you push it in and twist it or whatever you have, however you do that. Well, this one's a little different. So it's one man operational. You have this latch here and it's kind of spring loaded and you just you're good now watch as i do it they go in and out as i move this lever now inside the body of the truck we have different tie downs we added as well as a pressure treated board just tie downs that way we can secure anywhere and everywhere we have six different d-rings welded in all equally three on each side just it's multiple securement points is always best for us we never know what we're gonna haul and we have double eyes on the side of the truck and we did not drill through any metal to do this that was kind of our goal and at the point that we did this i didn't have a welder yet so we just kind of custom did this with wood honestly it was all ed's idea i'm no carpenter whatsoever so basically we used a two by there and that runs all the way into the front bulkhead and then we use the little bracket there to put a 90 up another two by and then we went with a two by all the way across to help kind of hold it into place and same thing legs going down legs going down and then just got little legs there and i did tack weld those um mr bowling ed's dad actually did that for us as well as the d-rings great guy doesn't even charge us anything now this box is literally just floating I and mean, i can move this thing around and whatnot it's kind of heavy but it doesn't dump out of the truck we have any problems with it and i actually got this box on craigslist for eighty dollars a piece and i got two of them the weather guards work great now this is kind of a big hole there's nothing we can really do about it so it kind of is what it is just all random stuff that we need and use and it just kind of organized itself it's just one big hole every truck's gonna have one now we're gonna talk about the buyer's boxes that we have basically they're 48 inches they're supposed to be stainless but they're definitely rusting already now we had Perkium performance put these on for us i think they were like 300 400 bucks installed not too bad they welded brackets to the frame just drilled in there to secure them same thing in the front so far that's holding up good now, there's definitely a lot of weight in these things but so first thing we have is we built shelves out of them um, what we use is wood to do it we didn't drill through anywhere we wanted to kind of keep it watertight we have a little tray here with all of our essentials little hand tools pliers it's not super organized but it's kind of just in place of how we use it and how often we use different tools definitely it has worked their way to the top lots of pink paint for layout um, we always have a couple sledgehammers on the truck always have a long tape or two a couple little block hammers regular uh regular claw hammer um a wire brush a rubber mallet 
and a dead blow hammer. We also always have our trailer ton lock, a wholesale kit, um, Ford fuel treatment, that's always a must. We have screws on the bottom, plenty of tape measures. You can never have too many of them. Somehow we'll have everyone out on a job and still can't find one. It's kind of funny and frustrating. We have our hardened steel drill bits, um, extra teeth, um, extra pins for the teeth, or keepers we call them, um, extra duct tape, we use lots of that, danger tape, and some uh, little impact sockets and wrenches in the bag, lots of bee spray and bug spray in there as well. Now, we also have a buyer's box on this side as well. So on this side we keep, on top we keep all of our concrete tie tools, um, chalk boxes, uh, extra chalk for the boxes, bury tape, some more duct tape, some masks for dusk, um, some fence ties, loppers to cut, uh, Anything that's steel, some people call them bolt cutters. Um, I have my tape pouch, that's always a must. I have that on at all times of the day. A grinder, we use that every day. We use our drill every day. And we use our saws all every day with lots of blades and lots of batteries. So, we have other Milwaukee tools inside the cab, but these are the tools we use every day, all day. Always have to be readily available. We have a little hand pick, that thing works great. Got it on Amazon for like 15 bucks. Um, over here at the bottom right, we have uh, extra paint, extra cold gal paint, extra bee spray, suntan lotion, anything like that that you would need on a job. Um, we also keep grease, the grease gun, silicone. I mean, there's so much little stuff in there you can't even see. Extra two stroke oil. We keep impact sockets there. Um, there's also another regular socket set back there. We don't use much, but it's in case of emergencies. Extra grounding shots. In case we uh, break a ground on site, we can CAD weld it back together. Now, bottom left is where we keep all of our rigging. Um, as far as straps go, our hooks, our clevises, um, anything like that. We also keep our long straps I'll show you guys that in a little bit, but under one of the seats in the cab. Now, same thing, this one's starting to rust too. It's kind of funny, but whatever. And let me go over this part. See these little cables? Those broke on us. So what we did is we left the ones that didn't break. And on the other side, we went to tractor supply and got a little chain. Kind of made our own little holder for the door. Now this side of the truck's the same, not gonna take long on it. Simulators. Logo on the side as well. An American flag as well too. Simulators in the front. And this truck was manufactured at the Kentucky truck plant. I've heard that that is a better built truck from that plant. I don't know if that's 100% true. That's what a lot of people say. All right guys, so on to the interior. We're gonna start with the driver's side. Um, we definitely use all the storage pockets of this truck. <laughs> They're kind of all filled as you guys will see. Um, so Ed keeps scales always in his door, gum, pencils, that good stuff. The steering wheel is a tilt steering wheel, but it does not telescope. Um, we have the WeatherTech mats in the front, not in the rear. We always keep a little blanket on the seat. The seats are vinyl. So far, they've held up pretty good. We definitely like all the cup holders. That's a nice little feature that the old trucks didn't have that many. Um, we always keep our little hand things there for when we're bored on the road. Sometimes we drive for four hours plus, sometimes less. Always keep lots of sunglasses. Um, show you guys what mileage we actually have it's a little over 20 it's actually 21.7 um so yeah 
We don't have a backup camera. It's a pretty basic uh, stereo system. Just the one Ford comes with. We have all of our auxiliary switches up top there. A little no another sunglass holder. It's actually edge reading glasses. Um, all of our light switches up top. We honestly never use any of that stuff, <laughs> to be honest. Um, now, center console. We always keep our little book here, our little binder with paperwork, measuring, uh, measuring devices like concrete scales, that good stuff. Always the updated blueprint. And then we always have our uh, log book. We don't use e-log just because we don't want to deal with it. Um, just never really got into it, don't want to until we absolutely have to. Now, onto the back seat. So first things first, we have our fire extinguisher mounted. Um, and we did not have to drill in anywhere to get that. What we actually did is we took the back seat out of the truck um, and we kept the one seat for in case we have to bring an extra guy. Rarely is that the case though. Um, so we didn't have to drill into the, the truck for this. We actually used an existing bolt from where the seat came out of. We have our full tilt grading hat, that's always a must. Our beware signs, we have to put them up at every job um, so no one can enter them. Of course, another phone call. As always, it's so annoying when people call. Now, what we had to do here is, according to DOT laws, you have to have everything secured in your truck. In case you get into an accident, it doesn't all go flying. Now, I gotta be honest with you guys, we do our very best with that, but at the end of the day, there's only so much you can possibly do. So, what we did was we put a piece of plywood down. Again, we used the anchor points from the old seat we took out, and we basically secured the plywood to it. Then we put little metal eyelets in for our bungee cords, and that kinda just ties everything down. Um, we used milk crates to secure that stuff as well um, we always have a first aid kit some cleaning wipes our grinder case with a bunch of extra different wheels uh, a five pound fire extinguisher that's needed on site um, has to be that specific one but that one there is DOT uh, approved so that's why we did that um, we have an RF monitor in here so doing the cell work at every job we have to make sure that the RF's or radio frequency isn't too high if so we have to get off site because it causes uh i don't know cancer or some other thing who knows never really had a problem with it yet that's all of our extra milwaukee tools circular saw um the multi-tool which that thing's amazing an extra charger a fish tape we have our hard hats our rain gear um and under here we have some rags in case we gotta wipe some stuff off. Right there, a little orange case is our cones and flares for DOT stuff. And this is always a must. The Milwaukee uh, cordless hammer drill. It's the largest one they make. Thing works amazing. I think it was like 700, 800 bucks. Came with uh, two Milwaukee 9 amp batteries and a rapid charger. Now, on to my side of the truck. Again, guys, I know it's not perfectly clean. This is just real life here. This is what it is. So on my side, I always keep my hair products for when I'm out of town. I'm young, so it's gotta stay looking nice. Hand sanitizer for uh, the current situation of what's going on in the world. Um, some knives, pencils, gloves, always gum. Um, always keep an extra grounding. This is a little cord for our ground, our igniter for our grounding. Sorry guys. Saw blade. We always keep uh, zip ties on that side. We keep all of our long straps under the seat extra blades, carmid blades, um, 
one concrete blade as well. My rain gear is on this side. And here's a better shot, guys, of how that's secured with the bungees crossed. And another thing I didn't go over, on Ed's side there, there's extra hydraulic lines in case we blow the line on the machine. We've already done that. For some reason, it's always the coupler line and it kind of puts you down. So, things that we do not like about this truck. One thing I'll say is it does not have a lot of power out of the hole. It definitely feels sluggish and you'll be all the time. You'll be on 100% throttle to the floor when we're pulling a machine. Now we are registered at 26,000. You can up this truck to, I mean with a gooseneck, you can go like 40,000 on these new trucks with a fifth wheel or gooseneck hookup. But we do have it rated a little bit lighter so we don't have to deal with if the stickers and what have you not. Um, so that's really one complaint we have about it. Another complaint is the whole DEF system. It's terrible. Um, it stinks. It's not efficient, but it's not really Ford's fault. Now, another thing I'll say is all these new trucks are kind of getting chintzy. I mean, they just are. Like, this aluminum is junk. That's just my opinion. Um, we haven't had any, like, paint problems or anything yet, but we have a... Ed has a 2017, and he's had some problems with the paint with that. I mean, a chip in, just kind of ridiculous when you pay this kind of money for a truck. But so far with this specific truck, we haven't had any real issues. So we definitely will buy one again. We're diehard Ford guys, of course. So we actually like this truck so much. We went and bought another one. Now this is the truck that I drive home every day. And that's another 2019. This is an F-350. It's got a couple upgraded packages. It's a diesel as well. 